Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about the x and y intercepts of polynomials. We're going to talk about the zeros or roots of polynomials. And we're going to talk about turning points of polynomials. We're going to put all that stuff together so that we can get an idea of how to graph polynomials. All right, so here we see the graph of a polynomial. The first thing we're going to look at is the y-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? Well, I can see it here on the graph. It's where the graph crosses the y-axis right here. I can see it looks like it's the point 0, 4. All right. Well, what if I had only the expression of this polynomial, or what if I didn't trust the graph? Maybe I'm not sure it's exactly 0, 4. Maybe it's just close. What if I wanted to confirm it? Well, if I have the expression for the polynomial, and you can see it here, how would we use this to find the y-intercept? Well, it's very simple. The y-intercept is the height of the graph above x equal 0. How do we find the height of the graph of a function? Well, that's just given by f of 0. So all I have to do to find the y-intercept is plug 0 in for x. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's our function. I'm going to evaluate it at 0. Let's see what I get. 0 to the 4th minus 5 times 0 squared plus 4. Well, this is 0, this is 0, so I just get 4 as an answer. Well, that tells me that the y-intercept is just the point 0, 4, which is what we observed in the graph. So great, we found the y-intercept. Now what about the x-intercepts? Well those are a little bit trickier. y-intercept, very easy. x-intercept, quite a bit trickier. So here we can see where they are. These are the points where the cro graph crosses the x-axis, and I can see what they're going to be. I can see that this one looks like it's negative 2 comma 0. Here we have negative 1 comma 0. Here we have 1 comma 0, and here we have 2 comma 0. So we can see what the points are. But how would I get this from the expression for my polynomial? Well, let's think about what's happening. What's the height of the graph when we have an x-intercept? Well, if it's crossing the x-axis, that means the height of the graph is 0. So here I'm looking for where f of x equals 0. So if this is my polynomial function, what I'm trying to do is solve the equation f of x equals 0. I want to find those values of x. Okay, well, that means that this expression is equal to 0. Now, how do I solve a polynomial equal to 0? Well, the answer is factoring. We try to factor this. Now, there are lots of techniques in factoring, so I'm not going to go over those here. That's something that you may need to review. Uh, but if you do factor this, what you should see is that this factors as follows. And these terms factor as well. x squared minus 4 factors as, and x squared minus 1 factors as, And so this is the factorization of our polynomial. Now we want to know, when is this equation true? Well, all I need for this to be true is that any one of these factors is equal to 0. Because if any one of these is equal to 0, I know the product is equal to 0. So let's look at them one at a time. Let's focus on the x minus 2. When is this equal to 0? Well, that's equal to 0 when x equals 2. So I know that x equals 2 is one of the x-coordinates of an x-intercept. Let's go to the next factor. It's x plus 2. When is this equal to 0? It's equal to 0 when x equals negative 2. So I know another x-intercept has x equal to negative 2. What is this factor 0? Well, this is 0 when x equals 1. So x equals 1 is an x-coordinate of an x-intercept. And when is this equal to 0? When x is negative 1. So I know negative 1 is an x-coordinate of an x-intercept. So we found the x-intercepts. And they are exactly what we see here in the picture. So in summary, to find the y-intercepts, very simple. We just, we just evaluate the function at 0. To find the x-intercepts, we set the function equal to 0 and solve for x. So the y-intercept 
and the x-intercepts are points where the graph intersects either the y or the x-axis. The numbers on the x-axis, where the graph crosses the x-axis, in other words, the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts, are called the zeros of the polynomial. And so we saw that to find the zeros of the polynomial, we just set the polynomial equal to zero and solve for x. And that will involve factoring. But finding the zeros or finding the x-intercepts is the same process. The only difference is when you're finding x-intercepts, the answers are going to be points. When you're finding the zeros, you're just finding numbers. Okay, so now let's talk about turning points. And this will help us understand better the graphs of polynomial functions. So what we're looking at here is the polynomial whose expression is as follows. And what we can see is that this polynomial has two x-intercepts. We see it has an x-intercept uh, at x equals negative 2, and it has an x-intercept when x equals 1. And there's two different types of behavior going on here. At negative 2, we see that the graph comes up to 2 and turns around, goes back down. That's called a turning point. A turning point is where a graph changes from being increasing to decreasing, or vice versa, changes from decreasing to increasing. So turning points correspond to local maximums or local minimums of the function. So we see we have a turning point here, and we also have a turning point over here. We're just going to be focusing on the x-intercepts, so we're only interested in this one. Now let's go look at the other x-intercept at x equals 1. You see that that is not a turning point. The function is increasing and stays increasing after that point. So these two different types of behavior, whether we have a turning point or not, is something we want to be able to identify from the expression for the polynomial. The first thing that we're going to want to do is factor the polynomial. Now this one has been already been factored for us, so that's great. If it wasn't factored, you'll want to factor it. Okay, so now that we have the factored form of the polynomial, let's go observe what's happening. At uh, x equals negative 2, what's happening in the expression? Well, you can see that that is the zero of the polynomial. Negative 2 is the zero of the polynomial, which comes from the factor x plus 2. Now you'll see that x plus 2 is being squared in the expression. Well, what that means is that it's always non-negative. If you square an expression, you can't get a negative number. And in fact, this is true whenever the exponent on that factor is even. If the exponent is ever even, it will be the case that that will always be a non-negative quantity. Well, what that means is, since we're multiplying it by the other factor, x minus 1 cubed, it's not going to change the sign. We're multiplying it by a non-negative number, so the sign is going to stay the same. And that is why uh, this point over here, negative 2 comma 0, is a turning point. The expression was negative, and it has to stay negative. The sign cannot change when we move by uh, x equals negative 2. Now, why is it negative? You might say, well, x plus 2 squared should be a positive thing, not a negative thing. Well, it's, it's negative because the x minus 1 factor is negative. You see, we are near x equals negative 2. So if we have to think about what happens when we plug a number near negative 2 in, the factor x minus 1. Well, you get negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. It's still negative. And when we cube a negative number, we still have a negative number. And so that quantity is negative, and we're multiplying it by a non-negative quantity. So it stays negative. And so this is a turning point, but it has to stay negative. Now let's investigate this other turning point over here at 1, 0. Well, this corresponds to the factor x minus 1. Notice that the exponent on that factor is a 3. Now what happens when we cross x equals 1? If I take an x less than 1 and subtract 1, I get a negative number. And as we cross this number 1, we go to a number greater than 1. If I take that value of x and subtract 1, I get a number that's positive. A negative number cubed is negative, 
a positive number cubed is positive. So that's why the sign changes here. And so that's why this is not a turning point. The graph has to necessarily cross the x-axis, change from negative to positive. Or it could change from positive to negative, but one of those th two things must happen. Now, this is the case where the exponent is equal to 3. But this will also be true whenever the exponent is odd, because raising something to an odd power will not change the sign. So what we've learned here is that any factor with an even exponent will correspond to a turning point. Any factor with an odd exponent will not correspond to a turning point. It'll be a point where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right, so here we have the expression for a polynomial, and uh, we would like to draw its graph. Now, this expression looks a lot like the polynomial we just had, but there is a difference. It has a factor of x out front. So let's see what difference this makes to the graph. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you have a polynomial that you want to graph is you're going to want to factor it. All right, this one is already factored. All right, so we've got that part done. The next thing you're going to want to do is identify where the zeros are. So you're going to look at each factor and ask, when is that factor equal to 0? Well, this first factor is equal to 0 when x is 0. So we know that the graph has an intercept at x equals 0, an x-intercept at x equals 0. When is this factor equal to 0? Well, that happens when x is 1. So we know that the graph will have a 0 at x equals 1. When is this factor 0? Well, that happens when x is negative 2. So we know that the graph has a 0 or an x-intercept at negative 2. OK, so we got the x-intercepts plotted. Now, what can we do? Well, if you recall, the previous video was about uh, end behavior of polynomials. That's the next thing we want to look at. What is the end behavior of this? Well, the end behavior is determined by the leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial. What would the leading coefficient and degree of this be? Well, one way to figure that out is to just multiply this whole thing out and find that term. But you don't really need to do that, because if you just want to know that information, you can get at it a little bit quicker. Let's just th think about what happens when I multiply this x plus 2 squared term out. We're going to get an x squared plus other stuff. right? So you're going to get an x squared from this one. What happens when we multiply x minus 1 cubed out? Well, we're going to get an x cubed and then lower order terms. right? What happens? Well, there's nothing to do here. right? This is already multiplied out. It's just x. So I'm going to have an x squared, x cubed, and an x. When I multiply those together, I add the exponents. 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6. So I'm going to get a 1x to the 6th. It's a 1 because none of these had any coefficients out front. So, it, well, except 1. So it's just 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So you're going to look at what that would be. And you know there's going to be other stuff there, but that doesn't matter. To determine end behavior, we just need to know what the degree is, which is 6 and the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. Now, what we said was that if the degree is even and the leading coefficient is positive, as is the case here, then we know that the end behavior is such that the graph goes up on the left and the right. So I know that the polynomial is going to look something like this. Now, what does it do in between? Well, we have to look at these terms and figure that out. Let's look at this uh, x equal 1 term. That comes from this factor. This factor is being cubed. That means it is not a turning point, which means that this graph goes through the x-axis. It doesn't go above the x-axis to the left. It has to go below. Now, whenever the exponent is bigger than 1, the graph will level off and become horizontal at that point. All right, so keep that in mind. So it'll go horizontal, but it will go past the x-axis. So it'll look something like this. Now, what happens when we get to this x-intercept? Well, that corresponds to this factor over here. Well, it's not a turning point because the exponent is odd. And so we know it's going to go through here. Because the exponent's 1, it actually goes through there diagonally. So it'll actually go through like this.
Only when the exponent's bigger than one does it level off and become horizontal. Finally, how does it get to here? Well, we see that the exponent is even, and so that means that it is a turning point, which means it has to go down to that point and then bounce off of the x-axis and then go back up. So this is the rough sketch of our polynomial. Our polynomial is going to look something like this. And here is the actual graph of the polynomial. And you'll see it's pretty close to what we got. We had this, here's the actual graph. Not too bad, pretty close to what we figured out. So understanding uh, end behavior, intercepts, turning points, we can get a pretty good idea what the graph is going to look like.